Ladies, outside the window on 8th Street, 92.1 WROI. WROIFM.com, streaming audio live, RTC Channel 5. And soon to be audio and video on RTC Channel 4. That's why Tim is in the studio. Hi again. Hey, there you go. Yeah. Tim, Tim's here. He's got... Tim spent so much time here, John, that he has his own coffee cup in the back room. Oh, is that the one you never clean? That's <laughs> okay. Yeah. We just we just let her go. Yeah, it was, it was, got those big letters on at RTC. Anyway, John Alley here, President and CEO of Woodlawn Hospital. Thanks for coming in. Hey, my pleasure to be here. All right, we had a trustee meeting yesterday. I had a trustee meeting yesterday. Uh, again, this time of year, there's not a whole lot going on, so we were just trying to do some updates and looking forward. Uh, one of the things. You know, I understand. I you know I wasn't here last month, so uh, Dave Colger came out. He did. Dave Colger I, was here. I learned a lot from folks after you know getting a report of what <laughs> uh, the meeting that he had. And I never realized he did everything at the hospital, and uh, you know, but they let me know that he did do that. Um, but uh, Dave has announced his retirement. Oh, really? Uh, come May wow. of next year, he's okay. going to retire. And uh, so you know, he and I have talked a lot. How do we want to handle that transition right. as we move forward? And we were wanting to wait till maybe. September, October this year, start looking for a replacement so they could spend some time together. Well, unfortunately, uh, the director of our business office is going to be moving back to Wisconsin to be closer to family. So that uh, kind of changed our philosophy. So we did hire a person to be the interim director of the okay. business office. And then once they hire uh, the perm position, then they will transition, start working with Dave and work to his retirement. And his name is John Kraft. And he uh, came to us from Pulaski. So he has a fairly extensive background in revenue cycle. He okay. was the CFO over there. So I think it's going to be a real nice addition to the hospital. But more importantly, it's going to allow him kind of to transition in without just being first aid come in and say, hey, here it is, take off. So he's got some time to work with Dave and, and kind of learn our system. And uh, I think uh, it's going to be just a great addition to the hospital. Well, understanding the finances of healthcare is uh, something that uh, is uh, it, I just to minimize it it's a very difficult thing it, to do it's mind-boggling <laughs> yes, uh, it is. you know every day the rules change retroactively and, and uh, so it's, it's very difficult to keep ahead of the game here and now we're seeing a lot of the insurance companies are coming to us and saying you know we've got some incentive payments for you but you have to meet these quality standards okay which we do, but it's how do you report those? So now we're after design systems, pull data out of the, the uh, accounting system, out of the clinical systems to populate the fields that goes to these insurance companies. And it would be nice if they all collected the same data, but they don't. So we got five different forms we're going through. So, you know, there's a, a lot going on there, but it's to the benefit of the hospital and more importantly, it's benefit of the patients that we do those clinical quality improvements to make sure we are delivering quality health care. And, uh, you know, when we got to kind of adding up the potential for us, if we meet all those standards that these five insurance companies have put out there, it could be four to 500,000 additional dollars to the hospital. So it, it's not something that we can say, oh, let's not worry about it. You know, as, you know, as the CFO and myself and Cheryl Musselman, Director of Patient Services, VP, we've got to make sure we get that for the hospital. That's to the hospital's benefit, to the patient's benefit. So John is well aware of all that, and I think he's going to be a great addition. Uh, he's currently used to the software system. Pulaski uses the same software that we have here. That's good. So it's going to be a pretty good transition, and uh, looking, not looking forward to Dave leaving. Uh, Dave's a unique person. We've developed a, a really good working rapport. So he's going to be missed, but I think John's going to be able to step in and take his place quite well. Okay. So the board got a chance to meet him yesterday, and uh, he got to see the board, you know, at their best yesterday, and uh, you know, so I think that's a good thing. Getting exposed early uh, sure. to the interaction and exactly very active board. Uh, they're they're not at all benign and quiet. They they do voice their opinion, which is a good thing, and I, I enjoy that. The other thing we want to remind the board of and, and the listeners is. Uh, Dr. Hoff will be having an open house for his retirement Just on a April, couple weeks. That's couple right. weeks on April seventh, and uh, you know Dr. Hoff has got over forty years of service in the residents of Fulton and surrounding counties. Has done an outstanding job in serving this community, giving back to the community, and he's going to be uh, sorely missed by everybody. But uh, we wish him well in his retirement. And I kind of asked him, I said, "Going to be traveling? What are you going to do?" And he says, "Don't know yet," which <laughs> I think that's the best kind. Have no plans sure. and just you know kind of do what you want to do. But uh, again, invite everybody to come to the Fulton County Medical Clinic April 7th. I believe it's 4 to 6 is the hours from that. And wish Dr. Hoff well in his retirement. Uh, we'll Absolutely. be missed. We'll be missed in the community. 
So then we finally got down to the financials, which you know probably we could have skipped over. Again, February <laughs> was not one of the better months for us. Short month. Short month, yeah. And well, with everybody gone and, right. and stuff like that, uh, it really made a, an impact on us. We had gross patient revenue of about $10 million, just a little over that. We wrote off $5.7 million, which again, that's right in that 60% okay. range. We we're kind of gotten used to that. So that left us with an operating revenue of $4.4 million and had expenses of 4.7. So if you do the math, the expenses were more than the income. Right. So we actually had a $300,000 loss for the month. We tried to go back and identify what caused that and we had one major factor in there and for whatever reason, you know, it was kind of unanticipated. Our health insurance, we're self-funded, which means you know, we pay all of the claims the hospital does. They're, they don't go through an insurance company. Okay. So if our, our employee goes somewhere else, we pay that claim. And we're about $400,000 over budget for the month of February. So we had some folks that, for whatever reason, had some serious medical conditions that, that really popped up in February. Kind of caught us blindsided a little bit because that's something, one, you just can't know that's going to happen. We try to you know budget a little on the uh, aggressive side in health benefits. But that one kind of caught us just a little bit off guard. And uh, so we need to look at that. Uh, the other major thing, we do our budget in July. of the of, Like we'll do next year's budget in July of this year. So we, um, one of the governmental programs, uh, the hospital assessment fee, based on the data that we had when we did the budget, our fee per month was around $15,000. And that's money we have to pay to the state to help fund the Medicaid program. Okay. They made changes to that in November and December. Our new fee we're paying is 70000 so there's a little bit of difference between seventy thousand and fourteen. It's a huge difference. So that kind of threw us off budget there. So we're gonna have to go back and probably work on our budget. Uh, we know that's a number that has changed. Put that in the budget, so it, it will revise our uh, twenty seventeen budget. But that way, we're not trying to explain every month why we're over budget that. But that's a pretty big number. Um, and again, it has to do with uh, how the state funds the Medicaid program and the HIP twos and all the different. Uh, uh, programs we have there for the uninsured and actually you know the state doesn't pay it all the hospitals in the state throw money into a pot to help fund that program and the theory is uh, that allows the state then to move the payment for those Medicaid programs from the Medicaid level up to near the Medicare payment level okay and but it only works if you have a, a Medicaid population you know coming to your hospital for us we're just about breaking even what that means we're paying in the seventy thousand. We're getting back about seventy-two thousand in additional payment for that Medicaid population. There are a few hospitals in the state of Indiana that they're paying out more than they're getting in, and you know so there's a little fallacy in that system, but they just can't seem to figure out how to fix that. And uh, you know so that's kind of a sore point with those. You know the the state calls them the winners and the losers. And uh, right now, the losers are starting to increase each year. We're, we're seeing less Medicaid population, but we're still paying into that program to fund everybody else. So we're hoping that as we look two to three years down the road, maybe we can tweak that program a little bit, make it a little more equitable for everybody, and uh, so we can all kind of benefit from the program instead of having some losers in the right. state. It's just not quite fair. And I, I hear a lot from those CEOs and CFOs, they want to do away with the program. I think it's a good program. It just needs to be adjusted so everybody gets some benefit from it. It's fair for everybody. It, so it's fair for everybody. And and how do I do that? I don't know. I mean, I think if I had that answer, I could retire a multimillionaire. Uh, but it's a very complicated problem. And, but it is a problem that needs to be addressed. Okay. Other than that, uh, we just kind of did some housekeeping work with the board. Okay. Uh, you know, some issues that we've we've noticed in there that unfortunately. Uh, our, the security of the hospital, we've made some major strides. You know, we've locked some of the doors down so the access isn't quite as, as easy as it used to be. But we're continuing to see, uh, I guess, a more disruptive environment through the ED department and, and some areas there where we just have some patients that are being brought in where those who come with them or even the patients are becoming more and more violent, uh, causing more and more problems for us. Uh, so I'm going to entertain and start talking to both the chief of police and the sheriff's department about maybe bringing on security, off-duty police officers, to run security in the building. And we're still trying to find out right. what's the optimal time. You know, and I just kind of do the straw poll with the employees. You know, we're looking at 4P to 10, 4 to 11 seems to be the, the window where we're seeing the most disruptive behavior coming in. 
you know, I'm Narcotics, charged, alcohol? It, it's both. Uh, you know, Accommodation? Com, right sure. now, it, we're seeing a, a lot of heroin overdoses yeah. in the community. So something has changed in the dynamics. Uh, you know, years ago, we had a big meth problem. It appears now we're moving a, you know, kind of uh, that pendulum more to the heroin. And, uh, you know, in the past uh, 72 hours, we've had five heroin overdoses, which is a lot it is for, a lot, for this community. It is a lot. With those come more violent behavior, right. either from family members or friends who are coming in with those, or even that patient, because once you reverse that effect of them, they're not happy. Uh, it, it, it causes a little change in their personality. So we're, we're looking to probably bring some you know, off-duty officers in eight hours a day, 365 days a year. So send an email both to the, the chief of police and the sheriff, say, we need to sit down. I, I've got to figure out a solution how can we do this utilizing our local officers to give them the opportunity you know they, they said well why don't you go with an outside security firm no that's not how it should be done we need to support our local law enforcement here so we're going to be looking to that within the next week or so try and figure out what kind of program we can come up with because you know some of the changes in the law i am personally responsible now for the safety and security of the employees staff and patients uh, that's a new osha law that kind of came into effect and there's been in New York State and the East Coast, there's been a few CEOs of hospitals put in prison for not providing adequate security for their staff. Now, they had very serious incidents in their facility, but I take that pretty serious, uh, and I, I want to make sure I, I've got a safe environment for everybody that comes in our doors. So that's, hopefully, within the next month or so, we'll have something in place. And, you know, five years ago, if you had asked me, would we ever consider doing that at Woodlawn Hospital, I would have said, absolutely not. But I think the times have changed, the, you know, what we're seeing as far as people coming in, attitudes have changed, and for whatever reason, we're a much more belligerent society than we were in the past. Well, you can see that even from the county perspective, and of course, Woodlawn being a county hospital, but we have a county security officer now yes. who is stationed in the courthouse on a regular daily basis. So that tells you a lot about the trends, yes. as you were remarking about, and uh, Woodlawn probably going to have to go along with that. Yeah, and the, a couple of years ago, the state legislature actually passed a, a law that hospitals now can have their own police force. So as you're looking at uh, you know, the Indiana University hospitals and the St. Vincent's, they have their own police force. They go to the police academy, they come out as fully uh, credentialed law enforcement officers within the state of Indiana. Are we gonna do that? No, we're not big enough for that. So that's why I wanna use you know, the, the local folks, uh, you know, the officers here know most of the people. Exactly. They're gonna be able to diffuse a situation before it gets out of hand right. because they've probably dealt with these people in the past. They know them personally. And I think that's one of the benefits of, of going with some local sure. law enforcement to help us with our security situation. John Alex, President and CEO, Woodlawn Hospital. I take it that pretty well covered your meeting yesterday. That was pretty well the full board meeting. Uh, we're just kind of looking forward. Uh, you know, a lot of the questions were, what's going to happen with the Affordable Care Act? And, you know, that's one of those best answer I can get is, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't um, think anybody knows. I don't think anybody time. knows right now. It's, it still is the law of the land. It's so still, we're, we're still that, operating right? under, the, under the current. Do right. I think there will be another revision come back at some later date? Absolutely. I don't think it's completely dead of the repeal. I think they need to tweak it a little bit, work on getting more support. So right. until that happens, we're just kind of going on in limbo and operating under what we know today. And hopefully we'll have enough advance notice of any changes we can, be, we can do change our operations to meet whatever those new demands might be. You mentioned the retirement of Dr. Ken Hoff coming up a week from Friday on April the 7th. Dr. Kevin O'Brien will be starting shortly after that. Yes, Dr. O'Brien will. He's going to be on a limited basis. Uh, starting in April at the Fulton County Medical Clinic. He's still trying to fulfill, as you know, he's a full-time emergency room physician. And I was kind of glad he told those providers, I'll finish my April schedule because it's hard for them at the last minute to bring somebody in. It takes quite a while to bring an ER physician in. So he's gonna help us out there through the end of April and still fulfill ER shifts and then pick up what he can in the, at the clinic. But come May 1st, he'll be full-time over at Fulton County Medical Clinic. and. Uh, you know, we've had very good response from a lot of past patients he had in the Logan Sport market that are saying, I want an appointment. When can I get in to see him? So that's kind of nice. I think that he has uh, you know, that following from quite a few years ago when he had a private practice in the Logan Sport area. And of course, we've got uh, surgeon Dr. Tomei coming in in the uh, month of May. He's coming in May 1st. Right. Uh, so, you know, Dr. Nile, I give him credit. He's been kind of working by himself for a while. And, you know, 
everybody says, well, I work by myself, but you don't understand <laughs> when you're on call 24 seven, uh, it makes it very tough and you get tired quick. And you know, a surgeon's not somebody I want tired. I, right. I want to make sure they're sharp. So we've looked very hard trying to you know, bring another surgeon in to give him some help. And I think it's gonna be a very good addition to the Woodlawn families, Dr. Tomei. Uh, excellent person, good surgical skills. Realize it's probably going to take a while for him to get ramped up and get real busy, but I think uh, given a few months, I think we're going to, you know, he's going to be a very valuable asset, not only to the hospital, but to the community. Interesting to note, even in the commercial that we wrote for the radio station to put together, that he, he also has a, kind of a sideline in cosmetic surgery. He does. So we're going to kind of talk about that, and is that something he wants to continue? He's coming from the St. Louis market, and it had a fairly large cosmetic uh, surgery practice there. We haven't really addressed that for here. That's something that would be totally new for Woodlawn. So, you know, I, I'm not opposed to doing it, but let's not just jump in both feet. Let's make sure if we're going to do it, we have the proper equipment, staff trained, so that when we do start doing this, you know, we're going to do it quite well. So that's something, uh, you know, maybe a coming attraction. I just don't know yet okay. uh, as we move forward. I would like to open up that part of his practice if he's willing to do that here. What can we do and to best serve the community? And also on a limited basis, you have Dr. Boucher, who is an ear, nose, throat specialist. Yes, and he's doing a, a fantastic job. Uh, kind of specializes in more of the problems, sinuses and stuff like that. Uh, he's one of the leading physicians in the state or in the country that does, a, and it's got the fancy name for it, and I can't pronounce it, but actually he can go into your sinuses and it's called a balloon procedure where he kind of opens those up. So if you've chronic sinusitis and, and you know, sinus infections, this will solve that problem. So we're starting to see him doing more and more surgical procedures with those patients coming in and, and getting that procedure done. And uh, I, again, I've talked to other ENTs around the country and they, they're they well aware of him. They say he's one of the leading physicians in the country for that procedure. So it's kind of nice to be able to bring that type of ex expertise to Woodlawn Hospital. And of course, it's a matter of calling his service. I think through the hospital, you can probably get a hold of him. Yes. But say that you want your procedure done in Rochester. Yes. Or you uh, want to visit with him in Rochester. And uh, you know, it's uh, I've had a family member who actually went to Wabash to see him. Okay because couldn't get in here. He's filling up very quickly. So uh, I know he's being really busy here. At some point, you know, he's had said, if I start booking up, I might want to open another day. Right now he's coming one day a month. We might start opening up two days a month or, or whatever he wants to do. But I think there's enough business here to keep him, uh, keep him happy. But, you know, it's just a service that we've been able to bring to the community. I think it's going to help a lot of people just with what he does and I what you know the internet's a wonderful thing I start googling all this stuff and you know I didn't realize how uh, much of a benefit this procedure sure. is and nobody does it he, right. he's one of the few physicians that's trained to do this and has done hundreds and hundreds of these procedures so he's, he's very well known for this procedure John, I think we should end our program today by talking uh, and doing something on a, on a sweet note, and that being South Bend Chocolate. Soft, yes, they're going to be in the hospital tomorrow and Friday. They are uh, You know, we were kind of discussing before we went on the air, you know, my, unfortunately, passion with them, they have these mint chocolate melts. <laughs> <laughs> they're just, uh, they're one of the most wonderful oh, things God. I've ever had. <laughs> so, yeah, invite everybody to come out uh, tomorrow and Friday and uh, do your Easter shopping and stock up on South Bend chocolates. They, the proceeds go to the, the foundation right. or the uh, auxiliary, right. which in turn, they turn that money back into a couple different things. They do scholarships for students who are wanting to go into the healthcare career. And then also they help the hospital. So some minor items that the, the departments say, I, I'd like to have this. They can go to the auxiliary, they vote on it, and each year they award X number of dollars to the whole hospital to go out and buy you know, some minor equipment that they need to dress up their area. Maybe they want to put some uh, you know, art or something in an apartment. They help them with that. So they do a very good job with the hospital and the proceeds go back into the hospital in some way to serve the community. John Alley, President and CEO of Woodlawn Hospital. As always, we appreciate your time today. Thank you. Pleasure for being to be here. here. Keep up the good work. Keep the community healthy. Will you please? We'll do our best. All Thank right, you. John, thanks.